Hey guys, Dylan A here, and we are back today for a brand new top 10 video. Obviously, everyone is in quarantine right now. They're in their houses, They're probably getting bored, so we need lots of entertainment. So I am going to be counting down my top 10 favorite TV series that I have seen, and I'm going to share them with you so that you can have some entertainment of your own. Let's get started. In number 10, I am going to put Love is Blind. This one is going to be different from pretty much everything else on the list because it doesn't really fit the style that I usually like, but this one I actually really did like because I thought it had a unique concept. It was kind of like a social experiment. Um, people have to blindly like date and continue on and build a relationship with each other. Um, so it made for a just a really interesting concept and it was pretty funny. The characters were actually pretty interesting, even though they weren't really characters. They were obviously real people who came and did this experiment. And um, yeah, that made it really exciting. So it's, it's pretty good. Number nine, we have Lucifer. Now I am only in the second season of this, so I'm still pretty new to it, but I was definitely hooked pretty much right away because the character of Lucifer is just so entertaining and so intriguing. He's very funny. It's obviously an interesting concept because he is the devil who escaped from hell and is on like some vacation in Los Angeles. So, I mean, that's already a pretty interesting concept, but his character is great and he pretty much turns into like a detective and starts working with the police to punish bad guys. I do wish that they had like one main case that like each episode builds upon, you know, to create suspense. Um, there isn't really too much suspense in this. It's kind of something like you could just put on and just be entertained and continue watching. Number eight, we have Nikita. Now this is one that I have also not finished completely. And that's because the third season for me kind of fell off a little bit. Um, it just kind of got a little repetitive kind of, you know, the same type of situations going on. But the first two seasons were actually really great. So the idea of it is that Nikita was part of this underground government organization that trained killers to protect the world, pretty much. And she escaped from them, which you're not supposed to do. So she's like an outlaw and like a rogue agent and she dedicates her life to trying to undermine and destroy this organization which she thinks is is doing a lot more bad than good number seven we have lost now this is probably a favorite of a lot of people i know a lot of people really love it and it's rated really really high um i have not seen this in a very long time but i remember it was really great, has lots of crazy supernatural things going on with the island. It's very mysterious and each season definitely like, like builds upon. Like obviously the first few episodes you think it's just these people are just stranded on an island, they gotta survive, but no, as it goes on you start to see more and more supernatural things, more and more mysteries unravel with the island and it really handles all of the characters very well. There's a lot of characters, obviously, because it's uh, pretty much a whole plane full of people, and they each really go pretty deep into their stories and their characters. It's, it's definitely, I would say, one of the best survival-type shows. Number six is going to be another fan favorite, which is Stranger Things. Um, yeah, I mean, what's really not to like about it? It kind of has a vibe kind of like the movie it where it's like it focuses on the children as the main characters which is very interesting because you really don't see that too often in tv series it's usually like older people it's also set in like the 80s so it makes it kind of like a period piece which is very interesting and it's just really great at doing the horror slash supernatural element combined Number five, we have Bates Motel. Now, this is one that I think is actually a little bit underrated, or at least people don't really talk about it as much, or it's not as popular as I think it should be, because this was very, 
deep and dark and scary. Um, but not in like a, there's a monster trying to kill you type of scary. Uh, it's very psychological. Obviously, um, Norman Bates and his mother, um, it's focused a lot more on, on their mind and their psyche and their experience moving to this new place and starting this motel business. It doesn't start with them being, you know, like scary people. Uh, cause they're, they're just normal people who start a motel business, but it's kind of like how these events unravel over time and how it, how it builds, you know, they're kind of like somewhat like forced into this lifestyle, which is very interesting. Like the lifestyle of being bad quote unquote people. Obviously, if you know the original movie Psycho, uh, obviously a classic. Um, it's, it's based on those characters, and I think it does it really, really well. Number four, we have the 100. I think that's 100 fingers. Anyway, the 100, I think, is one of the most unique and interesting uh, concepts that I have seen in a TV series. Pretty much, life on Earth is dead because of some kind of nuclear explosion or war or something like that. And the only life forms that we know of live on this spaceship, but the spaceship is running out of oxygen. So as an experiment, they send 100 teenagers back down to Earth to see if Earth is now livable. What I really liked about the first season was how natural it seems because when they go down to Earth, it is kind of like a survival type show, kind of like Lost, where they're on this empty land in the forest and they got to survive. They don't know what's out there. Um, they don't know what they're going to do. They have to make shelter for themselves. So it's very naturalistic like that during the first season. And as the seasons progress, it gets more and more crazy. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it gets more and more, more and more supernatural in terms of science, like science progresses and there's a lot more um, advanced things going on. Hard to explain without spoilers, but I really like it. I would definitely give it a watch. Number three, we have Money Heist, which is one that I was actually kind of underrating in the beginning. Like, um, obviously I've seen like a trailer for it. I'm like, eh, I don't know about this. But once you watch it, it's very amazing. The best way I would describe it is it's pretty poetic in, in the way it's edited the way it tells its story, and even in the dialogue and the music to how they incorporate music and singing, it's very poetic in nature. What I really like mostly is that it turns the idea of a protagonist and antagonist on its head. So obviously, if you just think of the story, it's people breaking into a bank, right? And then you have the police trying to stop them. So just that by itself, you think, okay, they're breaking in, they're the bad guys, the police are the good guys. But it really kind of puts that on its head because they have rules, rules like they can't kill anybody. They just want to prove a point about uh, money and government and power. So it really makes you question, are they really bad guys? Should we sympathize with them? And I think the show really really makes you do sympathize with them and they actually become the protagonists and the people that you you root for. Similarly to rooting for the bad guy, number two we have Dexter. Now, this is one of the first big shows that I've ever watched and it really like completely blew me away. So similar to Money Heist, Dexter on its surface, you would think is a bad guy because he's 
he's a killer. He's a serial killer, actually. Not just, he doesn't just kill one, a couple people, he's like, like, serial, it's like super serial. Big Kellogg's, Fruit Loops, he's that kind of serial. So, what makes it unique, though, is that he has a rule for himself that he can only kill criminals and bad guys, people who are already, people who have actually already killed other people. So it makes you question, is what he's doing, is it actually wrong, or is he good for doing it? Also, what I like about the show is it really develops good amounts of romance and comedy. I mean, Dexter is pretty funny. He makes some pretty funny comments. Also, what I love is each season is completely dedicated to one main case. You know, so each season has its own theme, its own crime, its own mystery that it's trying to solve, and it spends the entire season building and building and building upon that one main theme, which makes it super interesting and suspenseful, and it also makes each season feel different, so it's not completely repetitive, and it's amazing. Number one is a show, a TV show, that has episodes and seasons. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think you might guess it. It is Fringe. Now, this is another one that I think is very underrated. A lot of people who I've talked to like either haven't seen it or haven't even heard of it, which I find very upsetting because this is, when I say this is literally the best show ever, it is literally the best show ever. So, What's good about it? It's pretty much a detective FBI show. However, it's focused on strange types of crimes or strange occurrences in the world that don't really have an explanation. So it also gets to be very much of a scientific show and it really makes you question like how things in the world work. And it also questions the idea of multiple universes and multiple timelines. The main character is the FBI detective and she's fantastic. So you could super sympathize with her. And then you have this guy, Walter, who's kind of the scientist who helps on these cases. And his character is absolutely amazing. He's so funny, he's so smart, but he's also, he also kind of is out of his mind. So he's a little bit crazy. He doesn't really know um, exactly how to be normal, but he's just, he's such a, such a great character. And there's, there's romance in this, there's comedy, there's tons of action, science. It has everything wrapped up into one and it's just it really creates just such a unique world you you really have to watch it you really have to watch it i was even able to re-watch fringe for a second time a few years after the first time and i still felt the same way like i still was impacted just as much by it so if you can re-watch a show i think it's pretty great all right, so that was my top 10 favorite TV shows. Obviously, these are only shows that I have personally seen, and this is my personal order. Um, I'm not saying that these are the best 10 shows ever created. Um, I obviously haven't seen every show that was ever created. So as I watch more and more, my list could change and I might do updated videos. But as of now, this is my top 10 and I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you haven't seen some of these, uh, be sure to definitely check them out because I would not recommend them um, if I didn't think they were great. So you could also leave your own top 10 list in the comments below. And if you have shows that you really, really want me to check out and watch, um, let me know in the comments. I would love recommendations. Um, as you could tell from this list, my my go-to types of genres are like mystery, horror, um, 
police detective stuff. That's kind of just what I go for. But anything that you think would be good, you could let me know in the comments. All right, so anyway, hope you guys are staying safe and having fun the best you can. Stay active. And uh, anyway, I'll see you guys next time.